Sisters. Good morning, Mega Podlings. It's Crazy Joe, and I want to talk about WandaVision. We just had episode five of WandaVision debut this past weekend, which means we're now officially past the halfway point of the season. There are nine episodes in season one. We are five in, four more to go. We're more than halfway there. This discussion is going to involve spoilers of the first five episodes of WandaVision. And uh, if you have not seen the first five episodes of WandaVision, I would advise you to tune out now because there will be spoilers. And I don't want to spoil this uh, TV series for anybody. So please don't watch if you haven't seen the show. If you're up to date, we'll talk about it. If you're not up to date, come back when you are and uh, this video will still be there. So here come the spoilers. The spoilers are coming now. You've had your warning because the spoiler talk is about to begin. All right, WandaVision. First five episodes. Let's do a mid-season report card. What are we thinking of this show? I got to tell you, I am loving WandaVision. Those of you who know me pretty well know that my favorite TV shows are Star Trek Discovery and The Mandalorian. I actually think Mando and Dis Disco have to take a, uh, a backseat to WandaVision right now. Right now, WandaVision is the show I am absolutely positively most excited about. The twists and turns and everything about it. This is a perfect show. Let's go back to episode one. Uh, they dropped episode one and two at the same time. And in episode one and two, we get this... Uh, I hesitate to use the word parody. I don't think parody is the right word, but this takeoff homage uh, to sitcoms, particularly sitcoms of the 1950s for those first two episodes. They, they very much, the first one had very much a, uh, a, oh, I love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke show type of feel to it. The second one had a little bit of a, uh, more of a bewitched though they all kind of have the bewitched because she's you know got magical powers in every episode so so the bewitched theme is kind of a kind of running through all the episodes but these are really really well done uh homages to the sitcoms of those eras and i gotta tell you they could have given us nine episodes of just that just the sitcoms they didn't even have to connect it to the bigger MCU, and I would have been all in, because it was just something special. They were funny. They were legit funny. I laughed uh, on both of those episodes, and I just was charmed. I watched every episode of this series twice. I've seen all five episodes twice, and those first two episodes, I watched them twice the first day because they were just so charming and so good, and it was such a perfect show. Then we get to episode three, where it goes to color, and it gets a little more Brady Bunch, Partridge Family, with the look of the opening credits and the, the design of the house. And this is where we first start to get a hint of kind of what is going on outside this sitcom world, because the character of Geraldine uh, is... Uh, she mentions Ultron and gets thrown out of this universe. So this is the first time we really get an acknowledgement of what's going on there. And then we get to episode four. We find out that Geraldine, the, the character we knew as Geraldine, is actually Monica Rambeau from the movie Captain Marvel, all grown up. Uh, it's the adult version. She was a little girl in Captain Marvel. She's all grown up. And then we find Darcy from the Thor movies, Jimmy Woo from um, Ant-Man, and these characters all kind of converge. Personally, I think episode four is the weakest episode of the season so far. It's good. Season Episode four was good, but it felt typical. It felt typical. It felt typical... MCU, not the typical MCU was bad. I love the MCU. But those first three episodes were so unique and so different and so special. And then it's like, well, here's more of what you're used to. And what we're used to is good, so that's not a bad thing. And in fact, I would even argue it was necessary because in order to move the plot along, we needed episode four. 
But by the time episode four ended, it felt a little empty because we we had just had something so special with those first three episodes. And it's like, well, now we got to wait another week. And then finally, a week later, episode five, we get back to the sitcom world. But now we're kind of going back and forth between sitcom and reality. The big thing, let's 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 get to the big bomb about see episode five. I was kind of giving you my feeling of the series up till now, but let's get to what is really special about episode five. Episode five ends with a very hotly debated plot twist. And the reason it's hotly debated is we don't know what it means yet, and everyone's got their theories and everyone's got their ideas. But Wanda gets a the doorbell rings and Wanda tells Vision I didn't make that happen because we now know by episode five that Wanda is controlling most of this world and she says I didn't do that that I'm not the one behind that doorbell ringing so they go to the door and to Wanda's great surprise who's standing there Quicksilver Quicksilver her dead brother now that would be a shocking twist enough but they have just drop the anvil even harder because it is not Aaron Taylor Johnson who played the role of Quicksilver in the movie Age of Ultron. It is none other than Evan Peters who played the role in X-Men Days of Future Past, X-Men Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix. Now most people agree that the version of Quicksilver that we saw in the X-Men movies was far superior to the uh, version of Quicksilver we got in Age of Ultron. And not that what we got in Age of Ultron was bad. Aaron Taylor Johnson was just fine. It's just Evan Peters was really something special in the role. He just... I don't think going into Days of Future Past or Age of Ultron, Quicksilver... Is Quicksilver anybody's favorite character? I don't think from the comics there's anyone who's like a super hardcore Quicksilver fan. If there are, I've never met them. But coming out of Days of Future Past, everybody loved Quicksilver. Quicksilver's time in a bottle scene was the most talked about part in that movie. Now, I know a lot of people really, really hate X-Men Apocalypse. I don't. I like X-Men Apocalypse, and I don't even understand why people don't like it. I really am truly baffled as to what it is about that movie that people don't like. I think it's fine. But I think everyone, even the people who don't like the movie, would agree that the Quicksilver Sweet Dreams uh, are made of this uh, Eurythmic scene is actually even better than the time in a bottle scene that we got in Days of Future Past. They actually raised the bar. One of the biggest problems with Dark Phoenix is Quicksilver doesn't have enough screen time. Now, I don't know about you. And maybe I'm not the only one to say it. Maybe other people have said it. I don't know. But my friends can verify. From the moment we had whispers that Fox and Disney might um, the Disney might be buying Fox. One of the first things I said was, I hope they can do something where they can bring Evan Peters version of Quicksilver into the MCU. Uh, some kind of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey paradox thing where they kind of merge the universes and he plays Wanda's brother from an alternate universe. I thought that was a great idea, but as much as I thought it was a great idea, I never actually thought it would happen. Boom, here comes WandaVision Episode 5, and it happens. Now, a lot of people, I said there's a lot of theories, a lot of uh, ideas floating around. A lot of people are actually saying that this isn't really Quicksilver. Yes, it is Evan Peters. Yes, it does look like the version of Quicksilver from the X-Men movies. But a lot of people are saying, oh, no, no, it's some other character made to look like him. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a couple reasons. Number one, it would be too much of a tease. It would be too much of a tease. People are, are so excited right now to see our, our Evan Peters' version of Quicksilver that to give the fans that kind of a carrot and then pull it away from them, I don't think that would go over well with the fans. I really think that that would be a mistake. Like, here's this thing that you want and you can't have it. The fans aren't going to like that. They're not going to go for it. And I think that's a mistake. Number two, look at what we know is happening. 
Okay, look at what we know. Look at what is confirmed. What is confirmed is that WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, or Spider-Man 8, as I like to call it, and uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, those three projects, WandaVision, the next Spider-Man movie, and Multiverse of Madness, are tightly tied together. Why do we know this? Wanda is in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Doctor Strange is in the next Spider-Man movie. And also in the next Spider-Man movie are versions of the Spider-Man characters from across the multiverse. We know for a fact Jamie Foxx is reprising his role as Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2. We know for a fact that Alfred Molina is reprising his role as Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2. We have rumors, unconfirmed, that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire will be reprising their roles as Spider-Man from the Raimi and Mark Webb films. And now we're having speculation, rumors floating around that Willem Dafoe is going to be reprising his role as the Green Goblin from the first uh, Sam Raimi movies. So most of, most of what I just said is unconfirmed, but the part that is confirmed is Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina. So we are definitely, definitely getting characters from an alternate version of Spider-Man in the next Spider-Man movie. And the next Spider-Man movie is connected to what's going on in WandaVision and Doctor Strange 3. So if all of this is connected, it makes sense that we would be seeing other versions of the X-Men characters pop up from that universe too. It kind of fits. It fits, and therefore the idea that this wouldn't actually be Quicksilver doesn't make a lot of sense. So this opens an even bigger question. What does this mean for the Fox X-Men characters? Now, let's let's go back a second here. It's already been confirmed that Deadpool 3 is going to be set in the MCU. Deadpool uh, is set... Uh, up till now, Deadpool has been set in the Fox X-Men universe. We saw James McAvoy and those characters make a cameo in Deadpool 2. It's set in that world. And now that is going to be in the MCU. We know that for a fact... We've got Evan Peters appearing as Quicksilver in WandaVision. Does this mean that all the Fox X-Men characters are going to come into the MCU? It has been speculated for quite some time that when Kevin Feige finally got around to doing the X-Men, that it would be a complete and total reboot. That has been speculated. I have always said I think that's a mistake. And here's the reason I think that's a mistake. There is no history in the current MCU of mutants. There's no history of mutants in this world. And you need a history of mutants. You can't just have mutation be a new thing that happens. Because if you have mutation be a new thing that just enters into this world, then you don't get characters like Professor X and uh, Magneto, who are the elder statesmen teaching the younger mutants. For you to have an older, elder statesman mutant, mutation had to be around for a while. And in the current MCU, that is not the case. By merging the Fox X-Men universe, you could bring with it its history of mutants. And therefore, I think that's the way to go. And it looks like it might be the way they are going. So that begs the question, could Michael Fassbender show up as Wanda's father magneto i don't know but we got several episodes to find out i'm really excited to see where this is going i really do hope that this results in the fox x-men characters coming into the mcu because i never really the idea of a complete reboot never sat well with me it doesn't really make a lot of sense and people say oh well continuity wise this doesn't fit and that doesn't fit and that doesn't fit but that's the beauty of it it doesn't have to fit because once we do some kind of multiverse merging, any inconsistencies can be written off as a paradox. It's just a, then you just need to keep your continuity straight going forward. So it really works beautifully. WandaVision has just been a blast. I can't wait to see where this show is going. 
uh, the next four episodes, you know, I'm, I always prefer the weekly schedule to binge watching. I'm glad that they're dropping them once a week because it gives you something to look forward to. But man, is it hard to wait. I can't wait to see episode six. I can't wait to see where this show is going. What are you thinking? Are you excited about WandaVision? Are you loving the show as much as I am? And what do you think about uh, Quicksilver and what it means for the Fox X-Men characters going forward? Let me know. And as always, keep wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas with the plastic feet. Keep wearing those pajamas. Tell everyone to be. Keep wearing those pajamas with the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas. Don't open it to trap. It's a trap. Some people call them bitches. Some people call them jammies. They can come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now we're having fun. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now the song is done.